uh, thank you, Mr. Mansell, for being with us today. So I want to start by just saying that the COVID-19 vaccine is safe and effective in preventing hospitalizations and death from COVID-19, and the process for developing and distributing this vaccine is a tribute to the innovation and the technology and the perseverance of the scientists and researchers and manufacturers and also the federal, state, tribal, and local agencies that delivered shots into arms. And I include Moderna in that group. I mean, it's also critical that Americans continue to have access to these vaccines. Now, um, we're not talking economic theory today, but I want to say I'm a capitalist. Um, I went to business school. I started my own business, though I did not make as much money as you've made, Mr. Mansell. Um, and I understand the concepts of return on investment and risk reward, but it is difficult for me to accept that the profits that you are reaping on the backs of American taxpayers are necessary or reasonable. It feels like a bonanza to me. So I want to just understand a little bit about what's going to happen next. Um, you tell us that you expect the Moderna, expect Moderna to offer its vaccine at a list price of about $130, up from $26.23. Yet it is extremely confusing for Americans to understand what the price is that they will actually pay. It feels a little bit like a lottery, and too often we lose rather than win. So if a Minnesotan gets their insurance through Medicare, their vaccine will be free thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act. Will Moderna negotiate with Medicare on the price, or will you demand $130, sort of take it or leave it? So good morning. Thank you, Senator, for the question. So indeed, and maybe I should start there, regardless of insurability status of people in this country, where you're insured by a company, insured for a government program, right. or uninsured, we want that this is a no out-of-pocket cost for the American people. That is really, really important to us, which is why, as I shared, we really set up that program for the uninsured, for the people that are insured just through the law. Because it's a vaccine, there'll be no copay. Mm -hmm. And we'll make sure for the summer that the American people are aware, if they are insured or uninsured, right. there will be no copay. But they can some, walk. I'm sorry, but somebody will be paying. And what I'm trying to understand with Medicare or Indian Health or Veterans, um, the Veterans Administration, will you negotiate with the federal government and those agencies beyond $130, or is that the price, sort of take it or leave it? So like it's usually traditional in the industry, our teams and those discussions are happening as we speak, we'll be discussing with all those agencies. Okay. Following the, the, so that the law you will be negotiating. and the process, yes. And then thanks to um, the Affordable Care Act, Americans who receive their health insurance uh, through private insurance or through the exchanges will also get a vaccine for free. Um, do you expect that you'll be negotiating with those insurance companies or the PBMs or others on the ultimate price? Because again, even though it's free to, it might be free to those folks based on their insurance, somebody's gonna pay and that could of course contribute to increased rates for everybody. That's a very important question, Senator. So first, one piece that's important about the vaccine is if you look at the vaccine uh, in that price range, and that's why we, we, we looked at it very carefully, the cost savings in terms of hospitalization cost that year for people who will not get the vaccine and end up in hospital is a tremendous return. The, the cost is estimated to be in several hundreds of dollars for the direct cost of hospitalization and medical cost, not even talking economic impact and things like that. Uh, and so the... The, the benefit to healthcare system is going to be in reduction of healthcare spend in hospitals. Yes, that's I, I of course understand that. The uh, the question though is still whether or not there's. I'm hearing you say that you expect to be negotiating on what the ultimate price is, um, and. Uh, I want to just note, Mr. Chair, that thanks to the Affordable Care Act and the Inflation Reduction Act, um, Americans will be not paying a cost for this, but there still is a cost to the system, to taxpayers. Now, let me ask you one last question, just the minute I have left. So um, if I am uninsured and I go to my local pharmacy and I, um, need, I want to get the vaccine, I hear you saying that you don't have all the details worked out yet on what that will be like, but what would you like that to be like for that American? I mean, they're going to be asked to you know, pay something up front and then try to figure out the paperwork for reimbursement later, for example. So thank you for the question, Senator. We want to make it as easy as possible. What will be really bad... I think we can agree on this point. If somebody walks into a pharmacy and decides they don't want the vaccine, we, we want those people who want to be vaccinated to have access to a vaccine. So we're really trying to work with the teams on all the learnings of the other programs that sometimes don't work so well. 
which is why I'm a big proponent with our teams that are having those discussions as we speak to think about those people, what are they associated to? Is it a rural community hospital? Uh, and okay. then is there a way for Moderna to do a, a partnership with a hospital so that people will go to that hospital, if the hospital certified they are uninsured, those individuals don't have to do the paperwork. So we're trying to work on things like this because we want people who want to be vaccinated to get access to vaccine. We care deeply about that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Thank you. Point of privilege, if I might. Do I understand in response to Senator Smith that you are in fact prepared to negotiate that $130 price? with Medicare, Medicaid, and other federal agencies? So, Senator, our teams are going and having discussions with all the different customers. As I said, we used to have one customer, the U.S. government. We have 10,000 now. So our teams are, as we But you speak, have a federal government, which is basically one. Are you prepared to negotiate that price with the federal government? There are different agencies that work differently, so we're working with all of those. Senator Cassidy. Mm -hmm. 